Good morning. morning. You excited to be in God's house or what this morning? Amen. Hallelujah. This morning we're going to be, oh, are we ever going to be in some most exciting scriptures, Brother Scott. We're going to be in the book of Psalms. The Song of Israel, the Song Book of Israel, chapter 40, verse 3. And we want to welcome you to Southside Baptist Church this morning, members and friends alike, new friends, because every time somebody walks through the door, we want to make them a new friend. We want to make them feel loved and friendly when they walk out of this church for the Lord. And, uh, and that is our duty. And we're going to learn a little bit about that today. The Lord has really convicted me to talk more and more on our Christian character, how we should operate in our lives to draw people instead of shoving them away with our attitudes and the song we sing every day in our lives. The thought for today is this. Christianity isn't worth the snap of your finger if it doesn't straighten out your character. Amen? Amen? Let's stand now as we look at God's Word. Oh, what a great scripture we have today. I am so excited about this scripture. Wow. Psalms 40, verse 3. And he hath put a new song in my mouth. Even praise unto our God. Many shall see it, pay attention here, and fear, and shall trust in the Lord. Father God, we come to you today. Lord, you are the Lord of our lives. You're the one that's changed our very souls, dear Lord. Help us every every day, dear Lord, to work on our character, that our character becomes more like your character instead of like the world's character. Help us during, during all this pandemic and hard times we're having in the country and in the world That we as Christians that are are tested in the valleys. That is where true character comes out. So help us, Lord, to hold our heads up high and to realize that we're heaven bound, Lord. That the war is over for us. We're just fighting these little battles down here. And we want you to fight our battles for us. Put your heart in our hearts. Put your song on my lips. Forgive me if I failed you any time this past week, dear Lord, I publicly repent. If there's anybody here this morning, dear Lord, that needs a closer walk with Jesus, let this be the day. Anybody here that needs to, be, to accept Jesus as their Lord and Savior, let this be the day that they're set free from Satan's snares forever. Thank you for dying on the cross. Thank you for rising again and changing our very song. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. It's good to see some of you here that have been out ill and sick and things for the first time again. So it's just really great to see everybody here this morning. Uh, so the context of this text that we're looking at this morning uh, of, of the results of, is, is of the results of conversion. This is the results of your conversion. What happens when I get saved? What are we singing with our very lifestyle? Because everything we do is a song to somebody. And so when I talked about the result, what we're looking at is the result of our conversion. Result means to proceed or arise as a consequence, an effect or a conclusion to something. So, my, so my, how I proceed my, with, with the rest of my life, how I arise from the consequence of my salvation, what effect it has on me because of the consequence of it is is going to show if it's true what comes out of here. What comes out of here. What comes out of my daily life. My daily song. And I'm talking about every day, all the time. Not just the good times. You're, you're, See, your character, your song is, is tested in the valleys, not on the mountaintops. Right here this morning, we're on the mountaintop. But we're all together in one like faith and order. We're praising Jesus. We love him with all our heart and soul. We're all excited about being here, seeing him, man, praising the Lord. It's easy to worship him here. But when we get in the trenches out there, 
What do we do then? You say, Brother, you talk about that a lot. Yeah, we can get that down, brothers and sisters. Then we've beaten Satan, okay? We've got to get our character down for Jesus Christ. It's got to be an individual thing. So today, don't let this sermon talk to your cousin, your aunt, or your kids. Let it talk to you, Albert, personally. So the true result of anyone putting their faith in Jesus Christ as their personal Lord and Savior is a new song in their mouth. A new song. And I don't care if you can carry a tune in a, in a bucket. Your song sings louder than your entire life. It is exactly what comes out of here, I guarantee, you, can tell you. I can tell you exactly where your life is in about 15 minutes of conversation. If I'll just shut up and listen to you. I guarantee you that. A new song in my mouth. Even praise unto our God. See, see it says, many shall see it, the Bible says. See, right here, this is a good scripture. Many Every day you're out there. See, we don't have to go to Africa to be on the missionary field. We don't have to go anywhere over here. We can go right to Walmart, of which I visit a lot. Uh, oh, Wally World, man, that's almost as fun as Disney World. Anyway, uh, I love it. And, of course, there's one better for the guys, Home Depot, man. I love it. I told you the story. But the dad took his son to Home Depot. The boy says, Daddy, what are we going there for? He says, Honey, honey, I have no idea. We'll find out when we get there. <laughs> this is, <laughs> but this is such a cool verse before us this morning. See, God's people need to live in hard times, good times, bad times, wonderful times with the joy of the Lord in our hearts. Because people are watching us especially when they know that we have confessed Jesus as our Lord and Savior. That's why this is such a cool verse. In other words, many others will see the result of your conversion and change their lives also. See, we will absolutely, and I want you to be assured of this this morning, we will absolutely never know this side of heaven just how many lives we point to salvation. We'll never know. We'll never know. But on the other hand, we'll also never know how many lives we've shoved away from salvation by our personal song. Oh, and by the way, the very actions and attitudes of your life is your song. Is there a new song in your mouth, Albert? I put my name in this all the time. Okay, so now I can say, amen, Lord, there's a new song in my mouth. Or is it still garbage in and garbage out lifestyle? Does anything come into your life and just set you right off? You can give them a piece of your mind. See, as a Christian, it's no longer a piece of my mind. It's got to be a piece of Jesus' mind. That's how, if you're, if you're going to sign on with Jesus Christ, he says, it's me, or no, it's not, remember O Elvis? It's now or never. My, anyway, excuse me. When, <laughs> that's what the Lord's saying, is now or never. When, yeah, thank you for the, when one puts their faith in Jesus Christ, great change results. Not could result, not possibly will, possibly I am working on it. No, it needs to change. I'm tired of hearing people say, I'm trying, Brother Albert. I just keep falling. No, you ain't. You're falling because you want to fall. Because you ain't made the decision to follow Jesus 100% yet. Oh, sure, we all have problems. All of us make mistakes. But I'm talking today about the intentional ones that come right from your heart that you know you're in and you keep doing it and you keep saying it. You keep walking like that. I pray you get my vibes here this morning. Jesus is a life changer. Not a business as usual person. He's not a stay as you are savior. 
He's a life-changing Savior. Our text speaks of one of those great changes, namely the change in our song. It's really pretty. Because remember, this is the song book. Psalms is the song book of Israel. Okay, it was a bunch of beautiful poems and stuff, and they sang it all the time. It was, it was a song book. So I take this to mean it changes my heart enough to change what comes out of my mouth. Please always remember, your heart changes your language if you turn your heart over to Jesus totally. It will change. Your mouth is going to always prove what is in your heart. And I'm not talking about churchy talk. I'm not talking about when it's real easy here in church. Oh, it's so nice to see you, my brother. Let's have a holy day. I'm talking about when you're in line at Walmart. And there's 75 people up front of you. And they all got a basket with 7,000 things in the basket. And the lady up or the guy up at the counter don't have prices on anything. And they have to check every single thing. And then they're complaining about their credit card don't work. And you're number 75 in line. And they got 700 more checking lines and none of them are open. There is a test of your faith. And I'm serious about that, right? Amen? Because we've all been there. And then you're looking at this, and then they open, then the, maybe there's two or three lines. And that was moving pretty good. And you're hearing it. Let me go over here. 45 minutes later, you ain't moved, and they're all gone where you're at. You ever done that? Talk about tightening the jaws up. Man, you can have a major family disturbance right there in Walmart over the line, man. I'm talking about my everyday all the rest of my life talk. So first this morning, listen, it talks about the scripture, the harmony in the music. The harmony. He has put a new song in my mouth. There's a new harmony that I'm living for. A new harmony that I'm, that I'm singing to. A different tune. When the Lord saves us, praise God, he saves us. He puts order in our lives. Sin has brought much disorder. Just look around you at the world, at the hate, the immorality that is now becoming the norm of the world. The new normal. Liar, liar, pants on fire. Sin is sin no matter how you paint it. Don't tell me you don't know it's sin. Liar, liar, pants on fire. Albert. Shootings. Every day, more and more. A multitude of other sins that are running rampant around us. Sin has produced a song of disorder, not harmony. So much disorder prevails today in the world because of sin. A man writing about a rock and roll concert that he went to said of all the... the all the, the disordinate sounds that were going on, screeching and beating and stuff like that. says so nothing. They couldn't make ends meet out of nothing. And pe the people were going wild. Screaming, mixing of steel guitars and drumming had gotten the people to run out of any well. He said they'd have been run out of any well-ordered jungle because it sounded so crazy. People get in a frenzy of those things, okay? He said there's no harmony when sin is ruling. There's no harmony. And you know as well as I do, you let something take over you that you know is not of God. And if you've got any mind of God in your heart, he will bother you about that. And I pray that, I pray that Holy Spirit will beat me up like a dog, like a junkyard dog, until I straighten my life out for Jesus. But you see, salvation brings order. It shows up in our music, what we're singing. What harmony comes out of my life? Now, I'm going to give you an example. I, something I just went through. You know, the best examples that you have are your own. And if it wasn't for problems out there, you wouldn't have any stories to tell anyway. 
So the Lord's really blessing me with story. So, <laughs> if you get my vibe. Anyway, so I just went through a long, I mean long, you can talk to Sister Judy, ordeal about a lawnmower I just purchased. When we get it in the mail, we had it shipped to the house, you know, there was a defective part on the mower, the riding lawnmower. Many phone calls, several unkept appointments from the seller to come pick it up and get me another one, failed. They would, I was never called that we're canceling, we're not going to be able to make it. They just didn't, so what do you do? You ever feel like you're a prisoner in your own home? We'll be there between 6.30 in the morning and midnight. You know, can, can you narrow that down to seven hours? You know, anyway. So you're sitting at home waiting. You're afraid to leave because as soon as you do, it happens every time. We were there and you weren't there, so we left. So this is two to three appointments that they never even called me back on and never showed up. So we spent time at the house waiting for that. And many phone calls later, I even had to end up physically going to the store with the item. Several more problems arose when I got there. I chose to remain calm. I chose not to lose my cool. I, and I'm, I'm serious about that. That's not, any, that's not any stars on me. That's the stars for my Savior. Okay? Every person I talk to, they told me, well, we got, we, we can, we're going to just trade it out with another one. There's one right. I said, there's one right over there. I'll take it. Oh, that's... Then they check with their manager 10 minutes later. We can't sell the one on the showroom. Well, what happens when you run out and that's the only one you got left? Sell me the sucker, you know? I, mean, that's what I was really, I said, okay, no problem. So leave yours here tonight. We're going to repair it and have it back to you tomorrow. Or we'll have it back to you later. I says, okay, well, I'll wait. How long does it take? Well, the repair guy's not here. So you got to come back tomorrow. And more things and more things. So after several trips and several days of miscommunication and five different people, every time you call, it's never the person you called before. You even have all their names written down. I'm, I'm meticulous about that. Oh, they're not here today. Or they don't work here anymore. Would you fire him just because I talked to him on the phone? Give me a break. I talked to this guy. He's coming tomorrow. I'm qu I quit. Good grief. So... <laughs> But after all that, yesterday morning, I walked out with a brand spanking new, perfect in order, more. Got it loaded up, got it to the house, runs perfect, great. And I didn't, and thank you, Jesus, I didn't lose my cool. I chose to try to become friends to every person. It's not their fault. They got policy. They got, and, then, and some of them, maybe it was their fault. They didn't make the appointment. But you know something? Life's too short for me to get mad. I want to try to be your friend. And the last one I talked to, you know, usually after you've done seen five people, you've done been there three times, they not only rebated me the money, then I rebought the other one. By the time I got home, the money for the second one was taken out. And to this day, they still haven't given me my rebate on the other one. So I'm out two lawnmower prices. Still, that could be frustrating. Thank God I had the money in the bank. That <laughs> didn't bounce my tithe check this morning. Anyway, all right, uh, but so what? So what? The world doesn't turn on my riding lawnmower. See, I felt Satan prodding me because, you know, the, the, I could feel it coming up the back of my neck. But I kept saying, Lord, fight this off. I don't want to make an enemy here. Because you ever... You know, because if you, if you go in there screaming and yelling, do you know what they say every time you come in with a product or something like that? Everybody runs for the mountains because here comes that loud mouth Christian person. Even if they don't know that loud mouth person, you know, in other words, you're not singing any tune for Jesus at all. And I realize people will say, well, Brother Albert, you, I wouldn't last in five minutes. I didn't give him a piece of my mind. That's exactly right. Don't give him a piece of your mind. Give him a piece of Jesus' mind. I wasn't a wimp. I was stern, but I was nice. I worked real hard at not losing my cool. And thank God I didn't lose my cool. You see, I was in tune 
through that whole thing, I was in deep prayer. Lord, do, this is the biggest mess I ever got into in my life, Lord. But it's going to work out. And it worked out. Get in tune with the Heavenly Father. The new song attitude in my heart came out, and I became a winner instead of a loser. I got my new lawnmower, and I'm happy. And guess what? I've now made five more new friends. When I go in there, I got their name. I can call them by first name, and I can ask them what kind of day they're having. And maybe one day get the opportunity to invite them to church or tell them about Jesus. Amen? Look for opportunities to sing a good song in the hard times. I have learned. You never go wrong when you let Jesus take control of your situation. I even had amen written in my notes. It's your perfect key right there. Yes. And you, <laughs> Sister BJ, thank you. He may even say, oh, you're just a wimp, Brother Albert. I wouldn't have taken that for nothing. Well, who's Jesus to you? I'd much rather people think that I'm a wimp and maybe win one person to Christ or become a friend to somebody that maybe somewhere down the line, they, you know, when I, when, and usually the word pastor comes along, I, I kind of drop that once in a while, and uh, or, or Christian comes along, or, or church comes along, th- different things, like somewhere in the conversation, I get around to where that comes in there. As soon as they hear that, now the beacon's out, and if you say one thing against that, if they're being under conviction to accept the Lord, they're going to think, they're going to go right to that Christian, church, pastor, believer, and they're going to say, oh, look at their lives. They come in here cussing me out or pushing, putting me down and, and saying harsh things. Maybe not even cussing me, just, just gave me attitude, horrible. It made me feel like that tall, complained about everything in the world. I ain't ever going to that church if that's the kind of church they have. Think about it, brothers and sisters. If you sign on with the Jesus I love, if you sign on with the Jesus of the Bible, you're going to change your attitude. You must change your attitude to his attitude and not. Now, he got mad. At the Pharisees, that's because it was a religious situation. It was, a, it was a God situation, not an everyday situation like this. What did he say, I think? Render unto Caesar the things that are Caesar's, and God the things that are God. Brothers and sisters, we've got to get that down. Amen. I made several, the thing I really liked, I made several new friends. And the last one I dealt with was Daisy. Daisy walked up, man, she went out of her way to assist me and took me and got me and walked me all the way out to the car. She was just the sweetest lady in the world. So Daisy and I got to be good friends, good friends, not very quiet because I, she was waiting. As soon as she said something, I was going to jump on her again about something. I can't stand this way. I hate it. I'll never come back here again. Don't lie about that. You know you're going back. <laughs> don't be, don't ever say that. Don't ever, don't ever burn that bridge. You see, we must surrender our souls, our very souls to Jesus Christ. And he'll put a new song in your heart. So the moral of the story is, in the long run, I got exactly what I wanted. How do I know that God didn't want me to contact every one of those people? How do I know that God, through that valley I was going through, God says, there's another one. You know, they're really hurting in their family. You, you become a friend. Now, next time, they're gonna, and they're going to find out maybe that you're a pastor. They're going to maybe go to a church. Maybe not your church. Maybe they'll go to another. Maybe they'll accept Jesus out of your kindness that you showed them. See what I mean? I think everything is put in front of us for a reason. And that reason is to sing my new song for my Savior. Let me tell you this, brothers and sisters. You either have the new song or you don't have the new song. And the closer you get connected with the one who puts the new song in your heart, the sweeter your song will be. Amen? What song list do you go by? Second, the, the, the holiness in the music. It says, and here is where the rubber meets the road. Here, this, is, this verse, we ain't done with it yet. This is some good stuff. It says, Praise unto our God. That's my new song. Isn't that cool? That's what it should be. And he hath put a new song in my mouth. Even praise unto our God. Woo! And that's my new song. When the Lord saves, he not only gives us harmony, but our song also becomes one of 
holiness. Holiness. So our text speaks of, of, of praise unto our God. That certainly is a, is a higher level of music than what we hear today in the vulgar, sensuous noise that's going on out there. Unholy lives produce unholy songs. Jesus did not die on the old rugged cross for me to continue with my old rugged sins. Amen? He died on the cross to put a new song in my heart. A freedom from the desire. Now there's the big thing. You take care of the desire category in your life and you will, co you will take care of almost every problem you've got. Your desire. Where is your desire? Lord, take the desire of that sin away from me. Take the desire of that habit that I know is not bringing you glory away from me. That desire of that habit that is pulling my family down because I continue in it. And I don't feel convicted. You're telling me I need to give it up because it's tearing my family out. Don't be a stumbling block to someone else with what you partake in. Lord, put that new song in my heart. Take the desire to do that so I can be a better witness for you and have a new song to my family and my friends and my newfound friends that I'm looking for to have every day of my life. I want to make a new friend every day. I want to make friends. I don't want to make enemies. Uh, amen? God knows there's enough people wanting to make enemies out there today. And by the way, don't honk at anybody. Don't even wave at anybody anymore. And if you wait for a lot of room to get into traffic, I'm sorry. There's some crazy people. I never heard of so many anger shootings on, uh, what do they call them? Road rage in my life. And innocent people are getting killed. It's very, it's horrible. Horrible. Now that to me is not the song of the Lord, is it? So the, the next thing we look at is the heaven in the music. Praise unto our God. So where, we, where should our praise be? Unto our God. The subject of the song is changed also. I'm, I'm not singing about the secular things of the world now. I want to sing about my Lord and raise his name. And that's, that's why I'm an avid Christian music listener. I love to sing the song. I love, man, our praise team is doing a great job. Wasn't it looking great up there? There's a herd of them. Up there. Amen. God bless y'all for being up here. Some of, some of the, you know, we got Brother Jeff now, Brother Joe, the uh, rest of them are, are already coming. It's great. Pray for Sister Betsy. She's having some problems this morning with her uh, sinuses real bad. Uh, but the praise team, y'all look great. You sounded fantastic this morning. Thank you so much. When Christ comes into one's heart, and our verse, this, it says, the song is about God. What a great subject to be, to be singing about. Some people's words in their, in their songs about God and, and, and think that, illustrate a new song. They don't, they don't change the words. I, want, I choose to change my words. I choose to, I absolutely, and I'm not putting you, you listen to what you want to, but I changed what I listened to. My attitude. I wanted my attitude. I wanted about everything. Just, you see, because you've got to be careful. Garbage in, garbage out. Eventually, that garbage is going to come out in your song. Eventually. Eventually. Okay. So be careful what you are listening to and what you allow your children to listen to. You know, because when it's the beat from Hades, it's no matter what it is, it's still going to be the beat from Hades. Amen? See, we don't want to sing our songs to the tune of Satan's song. The ungodly may be attracted to your church by, by maybe, maybe just the music. But just music. And I love music. It'll draw. But there's no conversion in the music. Conversion is in Jesus Christ. There's no conversion in my words. Conversion is in Jesus Christ. So everything we do, what they did this morning, they did everything was to praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Everything I preach about is to praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, you put your song, Jesus' song, in my heart. Not Southside Baptist song. Not the praise team, not your congregation song. Jesus' song in my heart. You see, remember, remember when uh, it is the hands of Esau coupled with the voice of Jacob? Remember in Genesis 27, 22? I'm going to give you another scripture here. This is kind of interesting uh, that uh, 
uh, the daddy was being deceived. Remember that? Really a neat, neat story. Horrible situation, neat story though. And it can tell the tale today too. Genesis 27, 22 goes like this. And Jacob went near unto Isaac, his father. And he felt him. He felt his son. And he said, this is the voice, Jacob's voice, but the hands are the hands of Esau. There's something strange about this situation. See, so is my voice singing praises to the Lord, but my lifestyle, the lifestyle of Satan. See what I'm talking about? What is God seeing in my lifestyle? See, we can't fool God with a superficial song in our heart. But all the time, we intend on going right back to the unchanged lifestyle. We're going to get, we're going to get it right or not. God wants a renewed people. That is what's going to build the church. That is what's going to save souls. Renewed lives, not unchanged lives. Not two-faced. And the fourth, we're going to just about finish here, the help of the music. Now, what all of this with your new song, praising the Lord, all that stuff, the first part of the verse, there's something very important that ends it up. What is the music help? And the scripture says, many shall see it. Right? I'm talking about the 75 that's in front of you at Walmart. We'll see it. And ear. That just means they'll get, the, they'll get a conviction also and say, hey, that person can handle it, man. And shall trust in the Lord. Isn't that great? So let your, Christian, let your witness be known. Be proud of who you are in Jesus Christ. Let them know I'm, a, I'm just a believer in Jesus, calms my heart down. And, and you don't have to go, you don't have to get all slurpy over them. But just let them know what you believe. And then live what you believe, because they're going to be watching you every step of the way after that. See, our, our good music is as well as our good conduct will affect other people positively. See, you have, you have the crowd of the effect. Many shall see it. You know why? I told you you're on a missionary field. Every time we walk out of here, every time you go to the store, every time you go to the, you know, beat the Methodist down there at Whataburger, you know, the, every time you do that, don't shove them out of the way. Just get in line behind them. Be nice. Don't say, we got this long-winded sucker for a pastor, and he won't let us out, so you ought to let me get him in front of the line. I know you people been here because y'all don't have but two-minute sermons. I'm on video. I'm sorry. Excuse me, Methodist. All right. So... <laughs> We love you. Many shall see it. Many are the, are, are the wicked unbelievers around us uh, who, who watch our lives like hawks. Do you know why I know that? Because I was one. Guess what? You were one. You were watching those believers to see if what they said was true enough to them that they would live it, Sister Bridge. Amen? If they would live it. If they can't spot something wrong, they will, they'll, they'll, they'll try to, to, to discredit our faith. See, they, 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 if they can't, they, they, they think we're goody two-shoes. Holier than thou. No, I just serve one that's holier than thou. We, not, we need to, be, to learn to be that. We need to be servants of the holier one. Not dictators, but servants. Jesus came to serve and save. But people will try to discredit. They're trying to buy it. Christianity is, isn't that amazing? It's the thing that's not sometimes under fire. It's always under fire. They're always refuting Christianity. Always. Why? Because it bothers them so much. That if it, they don't want to change their lifestyle. They don't want to change their song. They don't want to do this Jesus. And all. You know, you people here just, 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 uh, you're just, well, I just can't stand it, so I'm going to put it down. I'm going to try to refute the resurrection. I'm going to try to refute the, the cruc- I'm trying to refute everything. But Jesus is in our hearts, so ain't nothing going to change. We know he rose from the dead. We know he lives today. Why? Because he lives in my heart. See, a total lie that Satan has put out there today is, is because you're under the blood of Jesus, though, so there's another one to be very careful, and there's churches that preach this. If you're under the blood of Jesus, you can go out there and do anything you want. You're covered with the blood. That is a lie from Satan because you see my very lifestyle is a witness to somebody around me. 
And if I believe that lie and go out there and say, oh, I'm covered by the blood, so I can do anything, I'll go out there and live an ungodly lifestyle, we're going to send somebody else to hell. And God says, you will pay for that. Their blood's going to be on your hands. That's a lie that has ruined thousands of people. Because I have met people that have told me that. When you're saved, your life will change. When you're truly saved, your life will change. Others then will, without a doubt, see the change in your music. Anybody notice you when you changed? Anybody notice the difference? Well, they noticed in me. Because I was, <laughs> they noticed in me because I wasn't the guy that was cussing at roll call anymore. I wasn't the guy that just, uh, I, was, I wasn't the guy that wanted to, you know, that put people down. And I, I completely changed. Now, it didn't make me a weakling cop. It made me a better policeman because I treated people like I wanted to be treated like I wanted my Lord to be treated like he would want me to treat people you know I was knock on wood and I'm not the greatest you know I'm not the sharpest pencil in the stack I'm not the coolest dude on earth okay but you know 33 years as a street cop I was never once brought up on any complaint of abuse not one time in 33 years. Amen? Amen. We got some other brothers in here today who did the same thing. Kenny, Kenny Granado did the same thing. Why? Because we serve an impeccable Lord. Thank you. How about the conversation or the conversion effect? They will see you and they will fear and shall trust in the Lord. This is our goal in the Lord. Not in you. Not in Southside Baptist Church. They'll trust in the Lord. Oh, I love it. There's a neat movie out called Sin Eater. Anybody ever see Sin Eater? It is the coolest movie. It is so cool. About a story in the Appalachian Mountains back in the 18th century. Really cool movie. But anyway, long story short, this little lady had this friend, and the friend was gone. And, and, and uh, she says, my friend was gone. She says, but I didn't need my friend anymore because I had the Lord. You see what I mean? The Lord is the one that sticketh closer than a brother or a sister. The Lord is always with us. He is our friend inside out, good, bad, ugly. The Lord is there for us. And we need to show people that the Lord is with me everywhere. In fact, I'm listening to a devotion right now. It's a British guy that's talking on there. And, I really, and they call it the, the Lord. The Lord. I just, so, I just love to hear him say it. It's so cool. Lord. That's so neat. Anyway. The Lord, I love you. It's so neat. Judy is listening to it, and we just talk about it. Every time we look at each other now, we say, Lord, I love you. We just love that word. It sounds so good. The British got it. Man, y'all, I love the way y'all say, Lord, it's wonderful. Did you get my point across? Anyway, you know, some things, uh, you know, Sister Linda, when you get my age, uh, smaller situations excite you. <laughs> anyway, the change... <laughs> The change in one's music will so affect someone else that they will be converted. When my wife changed her music, three years later I got converted because of her music. Amen? Because of her lifestyle. Every one of us can probably point to somebody. Amen? If there's no change, one can question the conversion of the person claiming salvation. And the lack of change will stop other conversions. But when there is a new song in one's heart, because of, because of coming to the Lord, Lord, it is a powerful means of winning many people to the Lord. Now the last thing I'll share with you this morning here, and we'll be closing, is this. Our main verse will be done. And it's, it's, it's the verse after our main verse. And now let's go to Psalm 40, verse 4. It's kind of a neat verse after that, okay? And then it says here, Blessed is that man or woman that maketh the Lord their trust. Isn't that pretty? It puts their trust in the Lord. And respecteth, King James, respecteth not the proud or the world, 
nor such as turn aside to lies or lapse into lies. Jesus cannot, the Lord cannot stand the liar. What song are you singing with your heart and your actions today? Romans 3.23 For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Romans 6.23 For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. Oh, I am so ready for it, so excited about that. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Romans 5, 8. That God commended his love toward us. And that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Ooh, that's powerful. Revelation 3, 20. Revelation 3, 20. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man, any woman hear my voice and open the door, I will come into them and sup with them and them with me. Oh, Lord, I want that supper. Romans 10, 9 through 11. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus... And shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead. Thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness. And the mouth, with the mouth confession is made what? Unto salvation. Hallelujah. For the scripture saith, Whosoever believeth on him shall not, not be ashamed. And in Romans 10, 13. Or whosoever, I love this. Put my name in there, Albert. Put your name in there, whoever. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved.